Yo, what's poppin' everybody? Welcome back to the podcast, another episode of Caffeine and Green with your man, Connor Cardenas. And before we get into it today, I just want to give a huge shout out to the sponsors of Caffeine and Green, which is Thorn Street Brewery and Seven Seas Roasting Company, coming st- both coming straight out of San Diego, California. Now, one of the best things about having Seven Seas Roasting as one of the sponsors of the podcast is that they've afforded me a code that I'm going to give to you guys so you can get an amazing deal on some coffee. Now, if you head over to sevenseasroasting.com, hit that coffee tab, and see all the coffees that we have available. For instance, the espresso blend, which is uh, Guatemalan, Brazilian, African, so it's full-bodied, chocolatey, a little bit of sweet berry, and then we also have our Southeast Asian coffees that we're known for, which is, um, like for example, our non Kali, which is very limited, and you should definitely cop it before it runs out. And its uh, flavor notes are butter cookie, a little bit of dried mango, and some almond. It's very, very good. So those two coffees, for example, you'll be able to head over. You're going to grab basically three bags of coffee and get that for 30 bucks. Now, that is a no-brainer because of the fact that one bag of coffee is $16 or more, and if you just to get two bags, that's over 30 bucks. You're basically getting a bag of coffee for free. Again, no-brainer. If you love coffee as much as I do, I would definitely do that. So you're going to pick your three coffees. You're going to head over to checkout. You're going to see a little promo code uh, line. You're going to go ahead and put my code in there, which is C-A-N-D-G. That's C-A-N-G at checkout, and you're going to get that deal. Again, that is three bags of coffee for 30 bucks. My guest today kicks off what I've talked to all of you about, if you've been following on social media or anything at all, about Caffeine and Green on the road, or on the road with Caffeine and Green, I should say. Kicking it off, we have my man, Justin LaRose. Justin was somebody that I had already known about because of Daily Coffee News. He had an article written about him, and this ma- this man was ma- is making uh, portafilter handles out of old skateboarding uh, out of old skateboards. He makes tampers, uh, the tops of tampers out of old skateboards. He has a product with Fellow Products, which is a a tea kettle. He makes the handle and then the top of it out of old skateboards, and then again uh, he has a product with the Chemex or Chemex products that he makes the, um, the, like the net collar, if you will, I don't know the exact name of it, but I saw this and I immediately thought, wow, this, this is amazing. This is so cool. What a great combination. Lo and behold, a couple weeks ago, somebody had DM me much like I've asked all of you listeners to do of people that they would think would be interesting to talk to, or that they wanted to hear on the show. And immediately, as soon as I saw his Instagram, I knew exactly who he was. I was like, oh my God, what are the chances? This is amazing. I reached out to him and he was just as cool as I thought he was going to be and even more. And I have to say, you know, never meeting him, driving up to Long Beach, meeting him, sitting down. It was one of the most invigorating conversations I've had in a while. We kicked it off. We hit it off. And it was, it was everything that I thought it was going to be and more. So I really hope you guys enjoy this podcast as much as I did. And let's kick off on the road with Caffeine and Green, right? So without further ado, my man, Justin LaRose. This is your time to shine, homie. Let's go. Give me ca- ca- caffeine and green. It's your boy, Connor. What's good? Good, good. Ca- ca- caffeine and green. Caffeine and green. And we are live. Hello. Yes. Justin LaRose. What's up, brother? You are on Caffeine and Green, sir. Dude, so psyched. Thank <laughs> you so much for coming up here. Dude, of course. Dude, yeah. So for all of you who don't know, I'm up in Long Beach right now at the warehouse of where everything gets done. Why you are on the, oh, why you are on the show, sir. You, um, I'm going to get right into it. Awesome. You, you make uh, portafilter handles. You make... Um, Chemex's uh, pieces. You have pieces of wood, skateboards. Yes. And you make coffee uh, items with oh, them. Heck yeah, yeah. Uh, so I, you know, I'm a longtime skater, and uh, you know, I've always loved skating, and so I was able to at one point crush all my passions together yes. of uh, coffee, skateboarding, woodworking, and I've been able to take you know the busted skateboards that are you know pretty much trash left behind when you know skaters get ill and uh make coffee tools using the woodworking experience i have you know that are just you know you know better than the stuff that they come with my first question and it's like why 
Like, why do you make these these tamper handles or like a porta filter handle or these a, a, a gooseneck tea kettle? Like, it is. <laughs> I and I say why because I say it with the best intentions of like, dude, I get so excited when I first saw the article that was written on you in Daily Coffee News. I was at like my I was sitting at my desk, and I was like, who is this guy? Awesome. And then just a couple of weeks ago, somebody had hit me up and they're like, dude, you need to have this guy on the show. And I was like, dude, it's the same guy. <laughs> like I was and the question again is why? Like what made you want to do that specifically for coffee? Oh, yeah. Well, OK, so I was a barista for years and then I roasted. Well, I assisted roasted coffee or assisted roasting coffee beans. Uh, and so at that job, we also they, whoever bought the beans from us or whatever, we would lease machines to them. So we would fix the machines and everything. And one day I'm sitting there fixing the machines and I'm like, I, I think I just thought of a cheat. I can I can make these tool handles out of skateboards. And if I do that, then it's like I'm getting paid to use skateboards. So I'm like. All right. So, <laughs> and I'm like, that would be sick too, because like, you know, the edge of skateboards, they're all made of these crazy colors. So, mm -hmm. you know, I could, could show that all off and it's made with boards that are actually skated. So it has like all of that energy and all of that, like focus and all everything that goes into like skating and the fact that it's been broken. So it's not like, you know, someone skated down the street so hard it broke. No, someone did crazy tricks on this and it led to them learning and doing all sorts of stuff. And so, like, what you can't think of a better thing to have for the handle of your tools than something made with that. That's like, you know, made with it's like hard work and like yeah. determination, blood, you sweat. Can't, you can't make stuff with that. You can't make it's like unicorn blood. It's like it's, <laughs> it's like fictional. It's like rainbow tinsel or something like it's just like that, that shit, it doesn't work out like that. And it's awesome. So the second it came to me, like I had to make it happen. And so I made I made the espresso tools, you know, and so ever wow. since, you know, I've I've done whatever I can do. So tamper handles for, you know, espresso machines or like the porta filter handles for espresso machines or the collars on the, the Chemex pots or roaster handles and stuff I've done. I've done uh, the 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 fellow products, uh, stag kettle handles. I've done, you know, anything that you can see that can be made from hardwood. I'm down. I'm tr I'm trying it, you know, dude, that's so rad. So like specifically on that fellow product, you have the top to pull the um the little like knob, the cover. Yeah. The the knob is made of skateboards and then you made the handle for the kettle and that's made out of skateboards. Yep. Dude, and it's like it just looks so ill. Like the the layers, how you did it, like the, the plies and everything, and then where we're sitting right now, we're in your warehouse. Yeah. For everybody. Definitely. Dude, this is insanity, bro. This isn't did you make you make this too? My wife hand carved the head and wow. did the painting, but I made the little wood bit. But for sure, yeah. So it's the it's like basically the handle for a Chemex. It's made out of these pieces for people who can't see. And then there's a custom cat head <laughs> made out of skateboard pieces that was carved by your wife. Yep. Dude, that is insane. Yeah. That is seriously insane. Oh dude. It, yeah, I'm to think that they were all skated. I mean, that's as a skater, that's going to constantly blow my mind. I mean, the colors are awesome and it looks red, especially as an alternative to like the pine or whatever the natural wood that's normally on there or whatever it is. Like, this is just ridiculous. And then to like, to like, you know, like if the crow picked this up, he would feel all that past experience of everything. You know, it'd be nuts. Anyways, yeah. Dude, I backed up. Why, why do you think like that? Because I, I feel kind of the same thing. When I'm, when I, I when you say this, it's kind of like, well, I think when you get like the mindfulness of the history of something, then you immediately start to think like, well, like how, uh, how does like, how does this affect like, um, how it's made or like what went into it? Because like, when you think of like quality and stuff like that, it's like the quality of something is the total amount of processes that went into like making something and so like a piece of wood you can pull a piece of wood off the shelf and just make something with it and it's wood you know it was a tree and that's cool and everything don't get me wrong mm -hmm. but like think about it this way like 
this has been skated and like that's part of the process of every one of these pieces is like that blood sweat and tears the effort the focus the time the you know the 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 upgrade that somebody's going through of their trick set is like all in every one of these pieces so like as skaters i mean especially to hear that it's made from skateboards we know that all of that went into that because you know we all we had that spot where you know we didn't leave until we were a bloody mess to get a trick you know oh yeah i definitely understand about that um what what's interesting is it kind of uh resonates with me with how i describe coffee roasting as well because i believe when i'm roasting it definitely like the energy that i'm putting into it and like i feel like the coffee only tastes as good as it does because the like the energy and the positivity and like that hard work and ded- dedication is put in that oh absolutely and it reflects so it's like i i felt the same way about skating but that's why i think i it resonates even more now with coffee because coffee's kind of taken over well especially with roasting because there's like a timeliness that happens to it like especially with like to get the nuances of what you're looking to achieve like things mm-hmm. have to happen at the certain time you know you ramp up the temperature you bring down the temperature you know the quench anything like yeah. you know like all of that's gonna air affect, settings yeah yeah all affect everything so it's like the timing or when you pop or the delay or like the stank you put on your back foot on a tray flip <laughs> or something you know like it's, didn't you, you do know, the dangly leg uh, yeah uh, Dude, people get sick like i wish i could do it so good but no nah, yeah. you know but exactly like that's the nuance and that's the spin that you're able to put on it but that completely like i can see how that translates into roasting dude it does it's i mean i don't know it just that energy that you're talking about and like that dedication and stuff i mean it's for me i say energy because like dude you're putting all of your effort and you're focusing 100 percent on it and it <clears throat> in a really weird way excuse me <clears throat> it also with coffee being so hard, like already people think like working in a, like a specialty coffee shop or for a coffee company when you're doing like mass production, dude, at no part is working in coffee easy. No, whether it's down to the farmer or to the, basically like a barista. I mean, like we're talking Starbucks, maybe it's easy, but I don't know. Not even, but <laughs> especially, yeah, specialty coffee though. It's like, dude, yeah. you're always working hard. You're like fixing machines. You're doing this, you're doing well, that. It's, it's like, it's, it's like the proactivity, the mindfulness. It's like the same thing. Like the last Ollie you just did better be, or the last kickflip you just did. You're in competition with the last best one you ever did. And you won't know it until you do the next one and you just feel it. And well, so yeah. the next latte you make the next batch of beans, when you experience it, it's when it's done that, you know, that you, you've got that, like, the quality or the sum of all of its parts, you know, and yeah. all of that goes into it. Well, that's why I like the idea of like with the, with the thought process that you have behind, like all of that being in the port filter handle or like mm-hmm. a tamper that again resonates because it's like, dude, you definitely should be having something as dedication. Like that's, that means so much when you actually really care about working in coffee. Oh yeah. Like dude, there's a lot, almost everybody who works at our shop has like a serious passion for coffee. Mm -hmm. Some people might not share like the deepest, deepest parts of it, but like, dude, we have a lot of like a wealth of coffee knowledge at seven seas Mm -hmm. and it's everybody's feeding off each other. And you're starting to see this, like, everybody's taking it a little step farther, like working on pour overs more or like, why can we like, let's analyze the, the, the batch grinders and how do we can make batch brews even better, taste better at like different grind settings and doing these things. Yep. And it's just so exciting. So it's like you to, to have a Chemex that has these things that makes it look sick and we're practicing Chemexes or we can get a gooseneck tea kettle with like your pieces on. It's like, hell yeah, dude. It's like, yeah, It's vibes. Oh, dude, I think it's the same mentality of like just being able to like have the experience of where you brought it to and being able to work with the variables that you know that you can work with in order to get the best results. You know, yeah, always. And you want to be steezy too. Like if you're a skateboarder, like, yeah, you know, you feel me. So you had actually asked me right before the podcast, you're like, what kind of skater are you? And I was like, I haven't been asked that in so long. I was like, yeah, you're like, are you like more tech? Are you? I was like, well, I definitely, I actually, I didn't answer, I didn't answer you, but, uh, I, I said hip hop cause yeah. like I just, but at the same time you could skate tranny, like super steezy, like, yeah. you know what I mean? Yeah. So I think I, dude, I'm a skateboarder in every sense of the word. I will skate fucking everything. Yeah. Hell yeah. I might not be good at everything, Yeah, but I will fuck. If there's a vert ramp, I'll drop in on it. Yeah. Like, you know, we yeah. run a skate a pool. Let's go skate a fucking pool or yeah. a bowl, mani pad ledges. Not so much anymore, but like definitely like 
OB Park down in San Diego. That's, yeah. That's my fucking That's park. a good spot. Yeah, You've yeah. been there? Yeah. Dude, yes. Oh, absolutely. Yes. I've, you know, it, it's been probably a good five years since the last time I've been down there or so. But, okay. man, like, I think that was the only park that I was able to find that I was just, like, stoked on. Hyped? Like, yeah. It yeah. was a good spot. Dude, Slow B, man. I love it. It's That's so many of my friends are like, dude, why do you skate there so much? Like, you just don't get it. Like, yeah. The people who are there that we I skated with, like, every day for three years – they get it like they know and it well, that's was just a core cool. spot oh like, dude it's yeah. a core spot like the dudes who like it love it oh yeah but to get like your homies like hey this is where we're we gonna go skate today it's like let's go hit ob real quick like no uh they're just like nah yeah <laughs> what's uh but yeah i would definitely say more just i'm a skateboard in the true sense how about you uh dude like it, the skateboard is the roots of like everything that i do you know what i'm saying like i mean as far as like what type of skater i am yeah shoot like at this point like i just skate parks because i'm old i'm like <laughs> i just turned 40 like last congratulations July. thank you so much yes it's the craziest thing especially coming from like the the wave of skateboarding where i came from like i got my first like pro skateboard in like 89 i think it was the hawk Street. 1989 yeah wow yeah. and so i've had one ever since and it's been like just a little different you know and just working with you know obviously but just seeing the progression and everything it's the same thing so like uh dude i've always loved like the tech stuff but i've, I've never been hammer guy or anything like that but yeah. like you know ledges love ledges but i'll skate transition you know like just whatever like dude parking lots curbs like dude yeah. especially recently i've gotten into the red curbs like red dude, can you red front curbs. side slappy oh hell yes you can yeah, i yeah, just yeah. learned that the other day dude yeah. so i the last thing i got was the feeble uh you can feeble not front back feeble oh back okay yeah, so you yeah, can yeah. jam it okay you just plow into it but <laughs> yeah. i can I, dude that's like the best <laughs> feeling in the whole world so you can just park on that for days and just yep. like just go with it yeah I'm especially a big if fan. it's like a double-sided curve oh yeah. Yeah yeah yeah. Yeah, yeah 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 if you got yeah if you got the one side or something but if you got like planter on the other side dude there's some sick red curves down here at is the it beach really or whatever and like <laughs> the, the homies take care of it and they make it really nice uh, they got the, like the um the lacquer yeah, on there instead yeah. to make it grind. You're yeah. not waxing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Dude, heavy metal Chuck. Here's a shout out to him. <laughs> Dude, that guy and the and the homie uh, Tiny Avenger on Instagram. Uh, heavy shoot. metal Chuck Ho and Tiny Avenger. Uh, yeah, uh, are Jose, those their Instagram names? Jose, yeah, oh yeah, they are. Uh, <laughs> Jose Serta, the dude that presses boards over at Paul Schmidt's factory, like the dude, they they take care of those curbs and they freaking make them look so good. And so when you get there and you hit them, dude, they slide for days. And like the whole thing you're talking about, double sided but, too. Yeah. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh yeah, dude, it's a big ass <laughs> oval, so you just keep going too. It's awesome. But yeah. Damn, an oval. Yeah. So damn, I haven't heard. It's like big. It's okay. big. Like okay. yeah, yeah. Dude, yeah. So that's that's I think what I'm. So you're a skateboarder. You're yeah. just a fucking skateboarder. That's yeah. what it is. Like. Maybe at a certain point in your life, you're like, oh, I'm this kind of skater. But like when you get to like an older guy, yeah. like my, me, myself, I'm 33 or 40. It's like, dude, I just love skating fast yeah. sometimes. You don't even need to do a trick. Oh, just no. like a tail scrape, you know, yeah. like a, like that Omar Salazar. Like, dude, tsh, tsh. Oh, exactly. You know what dude, I mean? Well, sometimes just skating to the store is the funnest thing. You know what I'm saying? It's like popping like, little ollies maybe. This, that, and the other thing. Or just going real fast and darting in through traffic or something like that. Whatever. Or what about like, like uh, ollie in like the sewer gaps? Oh, yeah. <clears throat> yeah. Just boom. Every day, every day. <laughs> like this is how I go to and from like the house to like wherever I have to park because parking situation in Long Beach is nuts. So, yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. So like I park like a mile away, and that's like the funnest little mile skate. I have no no complaints about no that. No qualms. Yeah, none do whatsoever. Have, do you have multiple setups? Oh yeah, yeah. Heck yeah. So I got like the trick stick, you know, with the hard wheels and everything. I think it's what I got eight and a quarter right now. Okay. But you know, and then like the grocery getter with like the big ass OJs. Both of them have Swissies, but like yeah, dude, just like to bomb on especially yeah. if you like long beach it's the best like you can hit some of those hills and you just like just shredding oh dude face to the breeze dude. just go for it you know do you ever just bend down and like try to put your hands yes. back sometimes like yes. fucking like dog town <laughs> ala freaking lance mountain like dude hell yeah like mm -hmm. face to the breeze just nose right forward hell yes dude do, yes. You, do you like do you ever slam Oh yeah, yeah. Oh, oh yeah, <laughs> yeah, dude. Every day, like, if I'm not falling, I know I'm not trying hard enough. Okay. And completely, like, I'm still, you know, whatever I can do. Like, I only get to skate like two or three times a week at this point, if that. Especially if I'm really busy. Yeah. But yeah, man. Like, I'm. But you're working around it every single day. Yeah. I mean, your office is these boards. Yeah. You know, what I mean, this is. So really, you're never not skating. 
well, I'm never not around skateboards, but like, uh, like I, like I definitely skate a little bit every day, but it's not like skating, skating. It might just be transportation or whatever, but like, it's totally fine. Yeah. No, that sometimes counts. you gotta like, in order to like, you know, you gotta reach that spot where it don't matter. You're, you're focused on that trick or whatever you're yeah. doing or what's oh, yeah. next or like just the flow of your line or something like you still got to get that. But like, you know, yeah. Dude, oh, I dude. just, when I feel like when I skate, because my my trucks are so loose now. Nice. <clears throat> and um, I definitely, it sounds hella lame to say, or just weird, I guess, but it would be like, I honestly feel like my board is like part of, like an extension of me when I'm skating. Oh, heck yeah. So it's like, dude, sometimes I, I'll be skating and I can like, I just feel it. Like I can feel the, the ground. I can feel everything about it. And I have one foot and I can like dangle my fucking other foot in the air and just like kind of fuck around oh, and, like, yeah. and then just kind of just do all types of weird shit, but like never not in control. You know what I mean? Oh, heck it's yeah. like, it's just like a flow, like a flow state almost, well, especially when you've been skating this long, you know yeah. what I'm saying? Like just that connectivity with even just rolling, like, I don't care if you're just popping manuals down the street or whatever, just yeah. like this, that, and the other thing, like it's just rad to be able to like enjoy like riding. Like, yeah. I'm sorry. Like, I love it. Like, no, dude, I'm don't apologize. Skate. What yeah, the yeah. fuck? <laughs> no, no, it's the truth. But dude, like, like, and it's this thing, like I've never known what I wanted to do with my life. I've yeah. never had a friggin' clue, dude. Like I've always worked in coffee because it made decent money. I worked at, like I'm from Boston. Yeah. And so, or I'm from outside of Boston, the town called Marlboro. But like, I mean, I lived in Marlboro. Boston. Yep. Like the cigarette. Yeah. Ah. Just like it. Is that where it's from? Uh, no. Okay. No, no, no. <laughs> Fry boots though. Fry. Anyways. Okay. <laughs> uh, so like, I've just always skated, you know? And like, I was, you know, when I started skating, it was the point where you were football players are like, do a kick flip. And well, like, how old were you thrashing. when you started skating? Oh dude, I was like 10. You okay. Know? Okay. And so like, it was still the thing that people made fun of, you know, and it, whatever it was. So whatever. And so like to grow up and especially now where like in Southern California, where I live, that there's skate parks, like within five minutes of each other and they're all over the place. And like Nike makes skateboard stuff. Everybody makes skateboard stuff. Like it is. It's, okay. Dude, it's the Olympics now. Like dude, it's yeah. so widely accepted. It's world renowned like you go anywhere in the world and you pop a kickflip in front of a kid and he's going to be stoked and you're going to be stoked and you can connect and you don't even have to know the same language dude it's like yes playing music. bro it's yes it's like playing music you yes. know like you, you can just get hyped and not ever understand the same language and so like dude music coffee carpentry it's the same like it's it's all like you're able to like transcend all it's of an the, international language yeah it, it goes beyond or universal language sorry. yeah hell yeah <laughs> international language yeah sorry, oh, sorry isn't that stupid, romance stupid, stupid. <laughs> it definitely was a universal language i i can really i have a like a, i can relate to that i lived in aix en provence in the south of france oh, for like a very short time dude. i was there for like three months four months i got expelled from the school i was at there so i had to come back to the states yeah that's sick though but dude there was a skate park where i lived <clears throat> and I shit you not, bro. I was like 16, 17 or something mm -hmm. like that. I was walking by the skate park and the dude, I just hear the dude say like kickflip, blah, 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 blah. And he spoke in French. And then I was like, oh, but I heard English. I was yeah. like, okay. He spoke French with broken English. I spoke English with broken French. But what we could relate on when I actually went up to talk to him was skateboarding. Yeah. He would, all the tricks were in English. Oh yeah. He'd be like, he'll flip. And then he would point to the stairs and be like, uh, I don't even remember what f five is in French. It's a uh, sink, sink. Huh? He's like, sink stairs, like whatever. And it was like, oh, okay, cool. Yeah. Boom. And then he'd do it. Ah, you know, like that's it, awesome. I would try to say something to him in French and they would like correct me or do whatever. But yeah. Dude, we all related on skateboarding. Oh, heck yeah. Universal language, bro. Completely. Yeah. yeah. And that just that smile, dude. If you're bombing hills, if you're if you're skating half pipes, quarter pipes, dude, if you're skating a curb, dude, and you just got that, you just landed something feeling. Oh. Dude. Not, pipe. Yeah. Pipe. That's in every one of the damn tools I make. You know? Every that's single what, yeah, one of them, yeah, you know? dude. That's, Hell yeah. Oh my god. What do you remember the first time you landed a kickflip? Yes. When was it? Shoot. How old were you and when was it? Okay. So I was probably, I'll say I was 13 years old and it's going to be at Ward Park in Marlboro, Massachusetts. Okay. And dude, like it was a tennis court 
and on a tennis just, court? Yeah, 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 yeah. It was a scraper. It sucked. And I probably <laughs> like I know the next one I shot out because I hated kickflips for life because of that. And like it's between kickflips and tray flips, I swear to God, I've been trying ever since I learned them to still like have them. Like yeah, you know, they, always. It's, it's always like I've never been able to like perfect them. I've never been like you know like oh this is gonna this is gonna happen every time you know like yeah I don't even care as simple as a kickflip is like I I'm sorry I've never had them on like like I have them on lock don't get me wrong they'll be ugly as hell but it like, don't matter you can still do it well yeah 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 yeah, Heck yeah. yeah. dude no that's kickflip was by far I think my last part that I ever had before I got like really hurt almost every trick in there has either a flip in or a flip out oh it's dude all kick for flip. sure I was just like wow I did a lot of kickflips what year was that? Fuck, dude. It was uh, my last video part. Fuck, 2014, 2015. Oh, maybe okay. 2016. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Dude, I could only imagine then for sure the, dude. The, the, the amount of tech that's going on in that. Like, it's the, it, but it's kind of lame, though. Yeah. It's kind of lame, though, with how many kickflips it was. It's like, oh, it sucks. But I just really liked kickflips. Yeah, no, whatever. It's just like, yo, I like kickflips. You get, dude, Mach 10 kickflips. Dude, Bobby Flay loves cooking with friggin' red peppers. That's not going to mean his next dish with red peppers is going to suck. You know, <laughs> like, that's awesome. No, nah, yeah, yeah. So another thing, kind of like with the coffee thing, do you, like, you only do the wood part, and then they put it on the port filter, and they, like, custom sign it? Or do you have, like, every layout of it, you know how to do it, so that way it's, like, plug and play? They they yeah. receive it and then they just screw it on and boom, you're done. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, I know what works for what machines. Like, so I ask what machine they have and I can tell them, you know, if like, if they need a porter filter, like the, just the handle, like I, I, I know which size it is based upon the, the make of the machine that they're using in order to make it fit and everything. Uh, there's only like two main sizes or whatever for that. But also like I am, <coughs> through some of the, the hardware companies that I'm grateful to work with, uh, I'm able to get like, you know, different porta filter heads and stuff like that, that are yeah. pretty nice. And like, actually, dude, I'm pretty stoked. Like the one company that I've worked with a lot is uh, out of Australia, they're called Passato. And dude, like in all honesty, their gear is sick. Like it's like AMG to Mercedes. It's like, if you're gonna have whoa, a luxury car. Whoa, are you yeah, serious? Dude, it's the Godfather too. It's better than the first one. <laughs> it's better than what it came with for sure. Wow. Like it's, I'm not even bullshitting. So, like, like legitimately like it's all bling it's like awesome like it's it's you get that stuff and it's I have automatically to look this up. awesome okay Dude, so like australia number one for espresso in the in the world like as Whoa, far as I'm that's concerned. a bold statement Dude, sir. that is a you bold should see statement, how progressive sir. those guys are like when you think of like uh like socratic coffee and stuff like that and and the they the, have like a, a company out there that makes those like day of the dead pictures oh yeah, yeah. what what are they called um, I don't even know who they are, but they're from Australia as well. Oh yeah, those. I, I think they do a lot of the. Um, they they might actually go through uh, the homies' company or whatever, but <clears throat> nonetheless, like yeah, that that hardware is rad. And so like I've teamed up with that guy, and we've been able to produce a lot of like limited edition recycled skateboard pieces, uh, like porter filter handles uh, of different you know, designs and stuff like that. Tamper handles of different designs and like super unique and limited every time. And every one of them handmade, you know? Yeah. How, so how do they stand up? Like, I mean, you working in cafes, you know, they have to go through sanitizer. So is there a special care that you have to do for these or is it oh, like, can it withstand the sanitizer? The, the wood? No. Yeah, the wood Heck can't. No. Heck it's, no. It's laminated wood. So I, I do the best I can in order to make sure that it can deal with um, whatever, like, a cafe is going to throw at it type of thing. But, like, if you soak it in water, it's going to be screwed. So I, you know, like, the the port, like the, the Chemex collars, I recommend you take those off if you're going to wash the Chemex or whatever. Okay. You know, don't put the wood through. Uh, if you got, like, the portafilter handles, soak the head if you soak the heads. But don't soak the portafilter handle. Uh, it's laminated wood, you know. Uh, it's not solid. It's susceptible to movement and stuff like that, especially with water. But, um like for the most part, like I treat it as well as I can to, you know, as long as it's treated well, it's going to work out, you know, but once again, it's made from skateboard, broken skateboard decks. Yeah. So sometimes there's unforeseen breaks that are in there and every once in a while, something will come back and I'll fix it as best as I can or make a new one and replace it or whatever, because dude, sometimes you just don't even know where the breaks are, you know? Of course. Of course. <laughs> and that's, that's, that's really tight that you would do that and like fix it for him and make him oh, a new yeah. piece. Well, dude, I mean, like I'm not trying to screw anybody, you know, like. Got to make it work out. Dude, that's buttery. 
Yeah. So you have a, a pretty good return policy then just in well, case. Yeah. I mean, I mean, if you think about it, like it's all like, it's all made from broken skateboards. So like, and it's laminations. Like, so I make like a big 30 inch bat, you know, out of like 32 inch broken skateboards, you know, and there's breaks all over that thing. And people are like, Oh, can you use this? I'm like, well, if you can't, if you want to, it'll take a bunch of hits. You hit it in the wrong place. That thing's totally going to blow up. Just like, like any other wood, yeah. like wood bat. But yeah. the thing is, well, the regular wood bats are a solid one piece. Yeah. This is like, 64 pieces or something like that you know what i'm saying <laughs> it's an art piece yeah like, yeah yeah so but don't get me wrong like dude they're heavy as hell like you can tap out the sweet spot it'll definitely take a bunch of shots yeah. but like I, how many i don't know, you know? <laughs> one of these days i definitely have to make one and freaking put it through the mill and see what it can do for sure that would be tight yeah damn so how long does it take you to make one of these pieces or like or do you make a bunch at, at one time do you uh it all depends on the way it goes and definitely on how difficult the pieces are um i'm lucky enough to work with a lot of like rad companies throughout the world actually like Posado and so with them uh or like Chemex or like Dietrich or uh uh I've worked with a bunch of different companies man it's always rad but I like, on a Dietrich oh nice it's which nice. one uh the IR5 hell yeah that's why when you said the the tamper handle I was like or the the sampler handle uh, uh yeah the yeah ta- I, call, I call it the tamper or not tamper uh, um, trier trier <laughs> yep. sorry I'm like way too much coffee stuff. Um, yeah, the, the trier. But yeah, I was like, wow, I did not know that. Heck yeah. Definitely going to have to get the upgrade for oh, sure. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You, it's awesome because like them or Chemex, like you can go on their website and see my stuff. Anyways, yeah, uh, it's, so- it's all made in limited batches. So like if you can get it, it's cool. Like if you're you, like, I always post about it on the Instagram or whatever. So you can see all the little things pop up and like people friggin they, they contact the companies as they see it being made and they're like, get you know get their hands on it as quick as possible damn that's rad it's sick dude i'm so grateful so do people like be like you know you they order 10 you give them nine kind of thing you're always creating a demand or like a limited demand well like the type of thing like it's yeah it's it's all super small batches because it's all just handmade by me and so it's not just like you got to make the piece you got to make the wood before you make the piece yeah so like it's not the quickest thing you know it's all conducive to like what you are susceptible to the time i mean shoot like i've had these pieces like breaking my face on the lathe but you can't just throw it away because you got so much time involved in it so you got to fix it and make it work out you know Damn. so like well i mean that's a part of being a carpenter too is like yeah. not just like dealing with a break because you should be able to fix that you know and so like i'm lucky enough that like i've been able to like push forward and find the the solutions in order to make these things work out no matter what and it might take a minute but shit man they come out sick like i'm I'm always hyped on every single one because the, every one is different, you know, because it's just all a culmination of so many different colors and pieces that I don't think any two pieces have ever been the same, you know. But, but So that being said, what comes to mind is immediately is you talk about all of the energy and time and everything that everybody has dedicated to that. But then you put your own twist on it by put, putting your time and your energy and your dedication into it. Oh, hell yeah. To like... So it's even like it's even more supercharged. <laughs> like there's some serious hard, like hard work. Thank you for thinking about that. Yeah, dude, I have mean, you thought about that? Yeah, well, I mean, shoot, there's there's a lot of effort that goes into every one of these things, and I mean, like it's cool for the person that definitely is just like I like bright colors, and I think that's crazy cool looking and whatever. I mean, that's awesome. But to like the skater, that's like, dude, I know that this thing was jumping downstairs. I know that this thing went on beer runs on drug runs and runs, <laughs> runs to school like you know what this thing's done you oh, know yeah dude first made it's probably been it's probably been rolled over dude. and you rolled a joint on it hell <laughs> yeah like dude, dude boards are utilitarian yeah you know? dude, like, it's, it's, it's a portable it, chair too or even transportation you, you know go. like where it brings you is anywhere you know and so like it's crazy that like that can be made into a tool yep that's magic i mean dude it's yeah just like the language it's uh it's a universal piece Anybody can use it. It's, Shoot, yeah. It's amazing. Bro. Well, that's why I like to make it for coffee because, like, it's, like, s- the same type of progression. Like, a skater's always looking to outdo the last one that they did, that they felt did well. And so, like, a coffee dude or a barista or a roaster or anybody, they're looking to, like chase that experience as well like they're constantly progressive in the art of making each cup better than the last one it's like yeah. you know it's more than being in competition with any other barista it's you're always in competition with yourself and as much as you can be part of a team yep. it's you doing it you know so like whether well it, being part of the team especially in a coffee shop like that though oh, yeah. when you see people start to like 
try to get better. You want to, f- at least how I think about it, you want to f- be a part of that. Oh, yeah. You see somebody getting better, you're like, I need to get better. Well, that's like you skating. Know what I mean? You know yeah. what I'm saying? Especially if, like, dude, you're at the skate park and there's another dude that just rolls up and you see he's got a similar trick set. And then you're like, ah, oh, I got your back. You know, like, you don't even know this dude, but you're just like, you know, you're not stunt dubbing him, but you're following him up. And it, like, all of a sudden you guys click and you're like, shit, dude, we got similar tricks. So, like, all of a sudden, like, you don't even realize what you brought to the table is your trick set. What he brought to the table is his, his trick set. And like both of either of you alone can do what you're going to do. But when you come together, it can make you do something you never expected to do. Yeah. And that's dude, that's, that's collaborating. The that's like the That's the way right that there. goes. You know, that's woodworking. That's freaking everything. It's yeah. music, everything. Like you can make it so much more by working with someone else to produce whatever it is. Dude, I completely, well, you're feeding off each other. Yeah. And when something like there's that synergy mm-hmm. and that magic that just, or even chemistry that two individuals have I'm talking about the flow state again, like yep. you guys are feeding off each other. Like, Oh shit. Like, Oh yeah. Your homie just landed that trick. He's been battling. It's like, yo, I'm going to get your back. Like, Oh dude, you're hyped dude, immediately. And then all, like, yeah. Have you ever been, dude, have you ever been like on a sesh? You gave up on your trick. And then your homie was battling his trick and he landed the trick and you're already sitting, maybe having a cigarette or smoking a joint or having a beer. And you're like, fuck that. And you run back up and then you get their back yep. immediately. And yep. it's like session over, son. Crushed like, it. Yeah. You know? Oh, dude. Has that, that ever happened? That fire. Yeah, dude. That energy is huge. And like, dude, it takes so much more than like even just going that by yourself. And I mean, you can be skating with people and still be by yourself skating. Mm-hmm. But like when you connect with somebody and that you're hyped because of their land and their stuff, dude, that. That's, dude, you can light a thousand fires off of one candle. You know what I'm saying? What do you think that is, though? What do you think that is? Like, that's just, dude, it's appreciation. That's hype. That's being, like, that's skaters being there, like, the biggest cheerleaders for the other skaters. And this is the way that I look at life. This is the way I look at the companies I work with. Like, I'm definitely going to hype them on. I'm going to cheer them up to the fullest. I'm going to slap my board. I'm going to, when they fall, I'm going to be like, dude, get up because you can do (laughs) it again and again and again because you got that. You're close as fuck. Like, you know, wherever. Oh, my God. Do that. Yeah. And so, like, I will always be that guy. I don't even know if, like, dude, there's people that I don't even know. And I'm like, I'm just like, dude, you got it. You got it. You got it. Come on. I'm right there for you. And I just turned into the biggest cheerleader. And so there's yeah. so many people throughout life that can do that in so many different ways. And so, like, that's another thing that I try to do, whether it's other coffee dudes, whether it's other woodworkers, whether it's people with skateboards, whatever, dude. Like, it's just, it's rad to be able to bring that fire. Like, tell everybody else and so like that's one big part i think about third wave coffee and specialty coffee currently is that support because before it was like chefs you know it was like don't look at my recipe i'm not going to tell you mine but now it's like dude this is my recipe these are my beans this is my profile of how i do it chart it on a computer here it's all right yeah. here. And so, like, I know yours is going to be a little bit different, but who's to say what you do different isn't going to friggin' make it dope and friggin' once again, it's like both of us skating. What we brought together is more than what we could have brought individually. You yeah. Know? Well, that, I mean, that being said, too, I mean, what's going on, in, like, and this is no way to plug for, like, trying to plug my where I work, but, oh, whatever. <laughs> the, like, at Seven Seas, like, right now, what I was talking about earlier is, like, the vibe that, uh, like, our manager has created – uh, for the shop and just the education that's going into like the time and effort for all the people like at both locations it's like yo it's a super exciting time but it's not even that it's just one person doing it it's like one person's hyping the other person up and then it's pushing everybody to, like yo let's be better let's oh, like yeah. get palette developments like let's get everybody to be on this level that they need to be and keep it all going and it's like that again like skateboarding you're meeting your your homie and then you guys are just vibing off each other skating a ledge learning a trick oh dude i get each other's back yeah it's just like boom 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 it starts happening and that's real chemistry right there yeah that's oh dude that's amazing that's stuff that would not have happened without you guys coming together to do that you know like you might not have ever done that you might not have ever tried that you might not have ever worked with a variable not even questioning the variable or whatever put it into effect you know but it's that little thing that's like or your homie just being like dude you got this one more try you know but i was like why though why after like two hours could you not land your trick but your homie lands his trick and all of a sudden that two hours it was like whatever didn't click had clicked and you were like yes let's I don't know what that feeling is, but it was always just like when you got your homies back and you actually rolled away or like that time you caught like somebody's kicking you out. You're like, one more try. Oh, and they're dude, like, they're the like, best. no, the no. Pressure, and then you throw your, the you throw your board down and yes. you land it. Yes. It's like, oh, dude. ah, you fucking bet. Dude, that's <laughs> the sorry, best. The double, the double middle fingers yeah, to the security that. guard <laughs> like, in the air. Ah! 
with with your friend with the camera (laughs) rolling away. I have this footage. I I hope every skater has that moment. You know what I'm saying? That is a priceless priceless thing because it's that pressure. It's the friggin' and you don't even think because you're carrying that energy. Like you might be dwelling on this, that, and the other thing, and might not even think that the amount of times is a factor. But the second that you see that this is going to be your last time, and that dude's going to be here within like a second, like you're like fuck, and you're dude. Yeah, yeah. You just throw down and you go, man. Like I'm a fan. I love that. That's the and you don't even think about the pressure. You're just like this has got to be it, and you just do it. And like you're in a spot where your mindset it tells you tells you that it's got to happen. So you kind of make it happen because of that, dude. There's no question. There's no doubt. It's like why can't you click into that all the time though, dude? You know what I'm saying? Like that would just be way more sick. But there's like it's all like what you're saying. It's like but it's it's all perfect timing. Everything's lining up to create that perfect moment where you succeed. And that shit right there. Yep. It kind of relates to like what Jerry, Jerry Seinfeld had said. He's like, you know, he talks about skateboarders. He's like, you know, I see kids like they're going to be all right. Cause they figure it's like problem solving. When you do those things, I feel like if you can roll away from doing, you know, a trick down a gap or a set of stairs in those high pressure moments, that's like a, a, a kind of teach you how to be successful in life. Because you realize like, it's going to come to a head like this and you can either like fall and like get kicked oh, out that's and a never do it. Swim moment. Yeah. yeah, sink, yeah, or yeah. Swing, sink or swim. Better way to put it. Yeah. Cause and it's you like, could, uh, you take the pressure and you, you're like, oh, okay, I'll walk away. I'm sorry. You it's know? a life lesson, yeah. dude. It teaches yeah. you. This is what it can be like. Yeah. If you just grind, well, you grind, grind, grind. You can't let people stop you. I'm sorry. And that's what that is. That's a security guard. And I understand it's liability insurance, all yeah. this crap. And that's why they're there to stop you. But our, we have a different plan. We have a yeah. different plot. We look <laughs> yeah. at things differently. We see wax curbs and we see a good time. Other people see a liability. Somebody could slip on it, you know? <laughs> but like, and they're like, we got, we got to stop this. And we're like, fuck, it's on, dude. Like, we got to, we got to charge this, you know? Yeah. Yeah. And it's that definitely that fire that comes underneath that for sure, you know? Dude, I love that. Like, dude, that's, probably my favorite thing i mean that's that's i think why when i moved into coffee for me personally i was like dude if i can skate and like take beatings broken bones like slammed head all that stuff coffee's nothing like this is all it has to do is use your brain Mm -hmm. and that is hard but if it's not physically damaging like bro using your brain is so much more fun oh yeah and then like when it finally clicks you know because like I at first used to be like super, when I was especially in coffee, I was super afraid of saying I didn't know. Mm-hmm. So I just started researching stuff so I could like educate myself. Oh, yeah. But now I'll say all the time, like, bro, I don't know. Like, let's look well, it up. Well, that's the best because you can, I mean, everybody can teach you something new, you know? Yeah. Man, I've met so many people. And I thought I knew a lot about coffee. I mean, I was an assistant, so I definitely, a roasting assistant. So I definitely, mm-hmm. like, didn't charge my own profiles or anything like that. Or like, like char- create them? Ch- chart my, yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah. And like, but like, talking with people who have by having the mindset of knowing what goes into roasting or whatever it's awesome to be made aware of what different people kind of look at when they're doing it like there's this guy at the local coffee shop that roasts uh over at black ring this dude michael and he's black ring oh black ring coffee is here in long beach yeah they're my favorite local coffee roasters okay these guys kill it and like Dude, they, they're super mindful towards their coffee and the, what they roast and the progression and how they do. They're, they're like bleeding example of like third wave coffee, like Sick. huge fan. So sorry, plug, but no, that's <laughs> totally fine. Shout them out, dude. But that's yeah, all good. But this is the thing is like, and this is the same thing with skating is like, they're willing to share that information because it could lead to you clicking into some mindset that makes it so you land your trick or you're able to roast the batch better or you're able to raise questions about different factors that you would have never questioned before, you know? Mm-hmm. And it comes from just the conversation, you know? And, and Dude, yeah. Up. yeah. Well, I like, I mean, I've, now that I've been in coffee for a while now, I'm starting to meet like other like coffee professionals yeah. and realize and get to talk to them and really pick their brains. And cause they have so much, like so much wealth of knowledge. I mean, it's been, I think, this, in this day and day and age, especially with like Instagram, everybody's so easily accessible now that you can have conversations with Joe Morocco, Scott Rao, like oh, yeah. these big name people, it's Chris Baca, like all these people. You Baca's can just got reach a out. tamper, yeah, dude. I bet he does, <laughs> yeah, well, dude, It's on. He's got a YouTube about it, <laughs> dude. I did not know he was okay. Being a skateboarder yep. and like actually skating, and I, I've talked about this on the podcast before. Is like there's skateboarders and there's skaters, like like you actually skate or do you skate? Yeah. 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 You know what I mean? Yeah. Right. So it's, <clears throat> I didn't know if he's like a skater or if he like, Oh, that dude's a skater that, but yeah, then yeah, he yeah. posted some throw, like some footy from back in the day. I was like, 
Oh shit! He dude, was like he ripped. He was tech. Yeah, he was tech. Dude. Like back tailing down table, like backside big spin out. I was like, okay, he gets a pass. Yeah, yeah, like, yeah. No, you know, he's legit. Like- <laughs> he's legit. Like I'm stoked. Like I was so psyched. Like I'm so stoked that there's so many skaters within like third wave coffee and specialty coffee these days. Whether well, have you heard of Steel Mill? Huh? Have you heard of Steel Mill? Oh yeah, dude. dude. Riley Hawk and, and Shea and, Cooper. Yeah, and and Figgy and yeah, Little like, C. All yeah, those are the dude, homies for bro. sure. Like this is one of the reasons why I need to make it down to San Diego for sure like dude you come to san diego i have a tamper for them do I ha- you really yeah, yeah 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 i have a tamper for them and i have to freaking bring it it's been so long i made it for him for christmas you know yeah yeah yeah. dude we need to do a caffeine crawl in san diego you oh, come down there and we'll yeah. fucking okay. we'll hit some coffee shops this will happen and we'll go skate we should just like yeah have like a mandate we'll do it <laughs> we'll do it i'm, I'm down no don't be dude, i'm serious I, 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 we can go skate and we can go coffee yeah Dude, we'll get like we'll get like a crew of homies. Dude, you're perfect. This is this is the perfect friends. A lot of my friends that skate are like, I don't drink coffee, and I'm like, well, no. Yeah. <laughs> dude, you, how can you not? Like, how can dude? I like, don't understand how people don't see the association, how it makes things work so much better. I'm dude, like a coffee fiend, and yeah. I, like, especially at 40, dude. Like, I need a coffee in order to go skate, you know, like or right after skating. <laughs> dude, one of my favorite things, one of like my, my homie Merrick Sapragni, he. When he came here to like the United States, he's from Prague. When he came oh, nice. here to like skate, we would he'd come over the years and all these things, and we would skate and skate and skate. But the, all the things that was always fun is about it about him specifically because I loved coffee so much. He'd be like, "We go get the coffee, and then we go to the spot." And he because like Perfect. he would drink coffee all day just yeah. like I did. He yes. was like, "God no, I've never seen anybody like an American drink as much coffee as you do." And I was Good. like, "Bro, that's it's my lifeline." Yeah, like that's for I was gonna ask you. So like, do you? For me, I remember the exact moment when I like what what coffee was. It was like my mom was teaching me how to make her her coffee to bring to her vanity. Shoot. Yeah, that's awesome. Was that's that, awesome. Does it go that deep for you? Like Dude. back in the day, coffee? Oh, yeah. Well, okay. So like I didn't like it the best growing up or anything like that. But okay. So my first job in my first job period was at Dunkin' Donuts in Marlboro, Massachusetts. Yeah. And my sister was the manager. And legitimately, this is where I got my love for coffee. And, like, I just loved it. And, like, uh, you know, I started drinking it, cream and sugar, like, light and sweet. Yeah. And it was trash. And, <laughs> it was, you know, it's Dunkin' Donuts coffee. But, man, being from Massachusetts, there's a Dunkin' Donuts across the street from Dunkin' Donuts. Like, you can. It's like Starbucks. Dude, yeah. Yeah. It's everywhere. everywhere. Yeah. And so, like, I loved it. And so, from there... Starbucks started popping up at a point. I was like, oh, like, and this is like right when, like, in the, like, probably around 96. So when they educated you in coffee, they gave you a real coffee education to every single person who started working there, like a legit one, like a real thorough one, altitudes, everything, temperatures, roasting, dude, you name it, even though their roasts are. Blech, it's whatever. just yeah mass production yeah, yeah it is it's what all it good. is it's all good but dude they have the mindfulness of knowing what the deal is and so like i got like a sick coffee education at like an early age and so like from there i worked at a bunch of places because you could just float around being a barista yeah and so like i i went to college for a year and i dropped out and then like i just skated around boston and so i had a bunch of different like coffee shop jobs and then woodworking jobs and stuff like that and so like at a certain point, it came to be like this whole mesh of everything that came together. Like Sick. what I do is like legitimately so like part of me because it's my passions, but it's also like every bit of it. Like the way I do finish is because I used to refinish antique furniture. Like the way I assemble things is because I used to make trade show booths. Like the way I make like really? street. Oh yeah. I worked for a company making trade show booths uh, in Long Beach when I first moved here. And like I've had just, I've had a thousand jobs because I'm like a nomadic worker slash punk ass like slash punk ass yeah, you know like you, you have a bad day and i'm like screw this i'm out like you yeah. know i need to go skate or something you know and so like yeah i definitely have had like a lot of jobs but like also at the same time like i learned something from all of these jobs whether it was customer service or whether it was finished work or whether it was this that or the other thing mm-hmm. like i'm grateful for every one of them for what i learned you know and so like i'm at a point what I didn't learn I filled in the blanks with with things that I could learn from like YouTube or the internet or different people who I could like reach out to through like Instagram or whatever and so like I'm grateful to have the process that I do today because it's truly like a culmination of everything that I've ever done in my life and it's weird to like to have this thing and all of a sudden have it be like your three main passions and have it like, com- like I felt random as hell before. Cause you're like, Oh, skateboarding <laughs> coffee guy. Who are you? Like, yeah. Like, it's like, 
whatever. And then like with all the jobs I had and like the fact that I have no college experience or like formal training or whatever, I just skated and like just like kind of skating take me where I needed to go because I just loved it like that. Like I didn't move out here to turn pro or anything. I just moved out here because I didn't have to shovel and like I could work at coffee jobs and it had and you be could nice. skate out on the West Coast, yeah. like all oh, the skate dude. spots and shit. Exactly. Like that. Yeah. You know, so like, why would you not? You know, and so like it came to be and like I just like to 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 hold like the Chemex collar or the tamper. It's truly like like I'm not even trying to cheese out here right now, but like it's legit like everything that ever was like anything that I ever did or cared about or like all of my experiences put into one. Like, and so like to be able to move forward with that, like, hell yeah, I'll share that as much as I can, you know? And so like, that's why the hype is real. Like I legitimately, I can feel that like in my heart, like when you say that it's, it resonates very, I've, very I've, deeply with me because that's how I feel about coffee. Like, well, I've never had anything like dude. that in my life until I thought of it. And then I was just like, shit, They're like, that's like, that's core. Like that hit yeah. me hard. And like, it, it like made me align with my understanding of it. Like coming through this, I came to feel where I need to be and feel my position and feel what I need to do like as a progression of anything and like like i was never that good of a skater but i shit i i i'm i'm trying to plug at this is hard harder than anything i ever plugged away at in my life you know and yeah like i was never that good of a student but like this i know i'm working way harder you're a student at. of life right now so well, shit, <laughs> yeah you know, yeah fucking gotta cares. move forward yeah who cares <laughs> man like school all right whatever honestly everything we're here in your warehouse right now yeah i'm everything i look at it's like Dude, it's not even that messy. It's clean. I you, have a, well, this is from being a barista. I have a problem with stuff on the floor, especially as being a skater too. Like I can't have things underneath yeah, my feet. Yeah, not so the rocks. I'm constantly sweeping. Dude, and I mean it looks good. I mean everything in here like doesn't you didn't need it. You know all you know how to do what you do. Yeah. That actually leads me to my next question was carpentry how'd you get into it what was is this been a whole life uh, a life affair or is it like shoot it's accidental like i was accidental. saying these are amongst the jobs i've had oh just woodwork that you yeah. fell into woodworking yeah so oh, like wow i mean at one point i was a roofer at one point i was a freaking like i would mill just like um trade show booths from a stack of plywood and just make them to the plans and the blueprints of what people gave me and i mean at one point i refinished antique furniture and learned how to like apply finish and stains and stuff like that and Mm -hmm. so like like legitimately uh like I was always good with my hands and I was always good putting things together. And like, I always had like, kind of like th- that type of like brain to type of, you know, you could just throw a pile of something at me and I could always kind of like make something out of it. And like, I've <laughs> always been creative. Yeah. I wouldn't say I was ever like artistic because I was always like so scattered and that's why I always felt random. So like to, to be able to like have that be like one of the main things, like, I've discovered how much of a passion it is probably within the last 15 years of how much I've loved woodworking. And it wasn't until like my wife, who was my girlfriend at the time, I dude, I brought home this piece of wood and it was just like this, this it had a, like a shitload of cuts in it because of what you had to do in order to have it be this piece of a frame for a trade show booth or whatever. And I'm like, look at this. I had to use like six tools in order to make this. Just one, like geeking out on piece. it. <laughs> and she's like, you really like this. And I was like, no, I don't. <laughs> and she's like, no, I think you really like this. That's tight. And at one point I was like even argumentative with her because like, I wanted to be a computer engineer and a computer like network engineer and really? stuff like that. This is my one year of college, what I went for. Oh, or whatever. Oh, okay. And so like, I, I loved computers at the time. And like when that whole thing dropped out, I was just like, Ugh. and like also at the same time, I couldn't afford any more college. So it was just like, screw it, you know? And like, like I didn't really have like anything that I worked towards, but I just liked like things, you know? And so I, it, it is really like, grateful for my wife pointing out to me the fact that I like that one piece of wood. And so like, I kind of just got mad progressive after that. And so since then, like where all of this comes from is the fact that like my mother-in-law would buy me like a piece here and there, uh, of like tools or stuff like that. Or like I would get a piece from like a yard sale or something like that. And so like at one point in the garage, I had like a jigsaw and I had, uh, like a carpenter or a contractor's table saw and I had like a drill press. And so like, 
well, dude, in all honesty, at one point, my mom passed away, right? And I got mad bummed on everything. I got yeah. bummed at work, and I got bummed on, like, skating even. And, like, it just really wasn't doing for me what I wanted. And, like, I would just come home bummed. And at one point, my wife was like, why don't you use these freaking tools you have in the garage and go make something? And I was just like, eh. And so, like, I legitimately tried to do, like, dovetails because, like, from before, like. Dovetails? Yes. Okay. So this is, like, uh. A, a pretty like trick little way that like if, if you notice like it's a way that they'll put corners together it's a way of a, it's a type of joint in uh woodworking or whatever in order to bring two pieces of wood together at a corner like it has these these flanged they, yeah, pieces yeah they come out yeah, right yeah, yeah. and then they basically interlock yeah okay and so yeah. like it makes for like a real strong fit and it's a oh. very proficient thing of woodworking and so like i thought i was good like that and so i tried my first set and like they sucked they were trash <laughs> okay. and so like i felt the skater kick in on me and i was like i need to make these better and so i plugged away a couple of times and then I was like, shit, like I have these broken board pieces. I'm, I'm going to make something for my wife because she like gave me the initiative to go out and make this. And so I'm going to make something for her, you know? Tight. And so like I cut up a skateboard, you know, and I laminated it into a block, like the main part, like in between the block, the, the trucks, because it's all even, you know, and I cut it horizontally and friggin', you know, so it's all smiley faces or whatever. And so you could see the concave and everything. And Sick. I made this wood block and like you could tap it. It was like solid as shit. Like it was not the shit solid, but anyways, it, it was <laughs> super solid. Anyhow, so like I walked around with this block for two weeks, like a just the, the, the most smiley dude. Like I was just like happy as a pig and shit. Like once again, shit. I don't know why pig <laughs> shit makes everybody so happy. Uh, but nonetheless, um, like I was just psyched. And so like somebody was like, well, what are you going to make with that now? And I was like, well, what? What do you mean make with it? I made this block. This block is awesome. And they're like, well, what are you going to make with the block? And I'm like, my mind was blown. And so I made this pendant for my wife. And like at that point where I made this pendant, I was like, I need to make coffee tools out of this. Like, That's when you knew my, that you're like, you want to make a coffee tool? I immediately? Wanted, yeah, that was after I made that pendant. I was like, I want to make coffee tools out of skateboards because like I was saying, it's like a cheat, you know, because if you can if you work with coffee tools yeah. and they're made out of skateboards, technically you're getting paid to work with skateboards. <laughs> Anyhow, so like. <laughs> So there was a little thing and I was like, I just had to do it for some reason. So I made the ugliest portafilter handle I've ever made. And it was gnarly. It was just like a big hot dog or whatever. And like I drilled out the end and used this gnarly bolt that I found from Home Depot that fit the end of portafilter handles and stuff like that. And it worked. And like I was hyped. I made this piece and I felt like it was like Christmas. You don't even know. This is like, you can look at my Instagram, by the way, okay. and see this whole thing happen if you go back far enough. Yeah, like, so you have the process starting. You can see the whole thing happen on Instagram where I changed over Yo. from being a roasting assistant to like where I'm at now. You can, if you go back far enough, you can watch the whole thing happen. It's Dude, nuts. Dude, I'm definitely going to check it's that out. It's nuts. Okay. So like you can see this portafilter handle. I've reposted it since and the thing's ugly as hell. But uh, dude, I've never been more proud of anything. And I started freaking crying. That's tight. When I made it. I yes. just like, like it was like what the Buddhists would say, the bottom of the barrel falling out type of thing of like, you just feel like every possibility all at once. And like, cause I've never made anything to like my own design before that like everything yeah. was off of blueprints and like i so i never made anything for myself it was all like this that and the other thing or whatever and so like to make this all of a sudden like i was tripping dude mm -hmm. and like like I, i've been talking about with all the skating and everything i was going through with like my mom's passing like i all of a sudden did not feel random there was a very real point where everything i was a random person and then i was not and like I knew like like all of a sudden like there was a paved road in front of you where before it was fucking trees. Sorry, excuse my language. Like it was ridiculous. Yeah. Like and like I've like just my head's been on fire ever since with the idea of just trying to do this ever since, you know. Yeah. And so like especially with the coffee tools, it just gave a direction, you know, especially because like it makes it so you can afford it type of thing because like this ends up being a little bit expensive because of the work that goes into it. Well, yeah. So like if you got a twenty thousand dollar coffee machine, you don't care about sticking one hundred and fifty dollars worth of handles on it. You're cool with that. Like, yeah. So minor. you know, but I mean, if you got a ten dollar shirt, you're not going to spend twenty dollars for each button on that shirt because I can make the shirt buttons, you know. But anyways, like 
it's just it's it was a way to make it work out and so like when when like i made the chemex caller like i was so floored by the thing i called chemex i was like i don't know who i'm talking to and like there was the girl the girl on the 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 front desk and i was like this is what's up and i'm like i just made this thing it's made out of skateboards it's your chemex caller here's a couple of pictures of it who can i talk to and she's like this is the the CEO's email. You send it to her. And I was Sick. just like, dude, dude, a couple of days later, I was on the phone with the, the, the CEO of uh, Chemex talking about And they were hyped. It. Dude, like, I just explained what I explained to the girl on the desk, and they were like, what? And they're <laughs> like, like, yes, yeah, dude, this because, is epic. Yeah, well, I mean, too, like, I'm so grateful on all aspects of to make all of the things I make, you know what I'm saying? And that's why I make it all, you know, like every bit of it. It's like, you know, I could make things that are worth a lot more money or whatever, but this is all core to me. You know what I'm saying? Like, and this is like true to my love. It's my passion, you know, true to it. Well, what's rad is there's a lot of other dudes that do a couple of the different pieces now and stuff like that. And so it's become kind of a thing or whatever. And so it's awesome to see like other people's versions of them and stuff too, or whatever. Oh, really? Yeah. And other people have done it now. Oh, yeah. Yeah, it's it's crazy, you know, and so Dude, like, yeah. But, I mean, that's the highest form of flattery, I guess. Well, you know, I mean, but. shoot, there's. You think you think Nadis got pissed when friggin' someone else did a kickflip? Nah, no. But it's just like to know that you're the OG, you're the guy who first. Well, I don't did know it, about like, that. Like, well, shoot, like, I'm grateful. I just uh, I just know where I come from with the feelings of it. I didn't do it because I seen someone else do and it. That's like, what I mean. Is, you're like, the OG. Well, that's, shoot, yeah, bro. Like, I seen other people do it with skateboards and that's what put the plant in my, uh, the idea in my head. Like I seen Hiroshi, like I seen Maple XO and like, that was just like, I can make things from skateboards. Like, yeah. and like, cause like, dude, in all the woodworking jobs bef- I had before, like I thought about it, but then I was like, that's not worth it. There's so much more work that goes into it. Cause like you got to go get skateboards. Who can get stacks of skateboards like this? You dude, know, I know that's so crazy. You know, like I have, like 5,000 skateboards right there. That's 5,000? They're That's all what it is? broken skateboards. Wow. Yeah. So I'm lucky enough to get from the local skate shops. Dude, I team up with like Legends. I team up with like United Skate Shop. I team up with LB Skate. And like they're nice enough to hook me up with the boards that people leave behind when they get new ones, you know? Dude, that's what's up. Yeah. So like they're all for it because like other than that, everybody knows that this rad material goes in the trash. It's just yeah. broken. Dude, it's all made out of maple. Maple is awesome wood. And like it's core to you to like the United States or to well to North America, you know, like it's produced elsewhere, but it thrives in North America with the conditions that makes it for right for skateboards. Yeah. You know, and like just everything that goes along with it, like every one of these pieces has so much like detail and history and work put into it by so many people other than me, other than the skater, other than the dude who made the skateboard. Like well, other, you're, you're recreating it's I, you're reusing. I am just helping it keep yeah. going, you know, on like, its path on its like, it's a, uh, the skateboard has a life. You're definitely like a next part of its life in a sense. Well, it's what's rad is that like, dude, like a widget to other people is a widget. Like this table is a table. You don't think to cut up the table and make something else out of it. You don't, you know, like you don't take a bowling ball and you cut it up and make it into something else. But to like be able to have a skateboard as a material and you think it's at the u- the end of its 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 function when it breaks. You put your foot through it and you're bummed at the same time, you know, as the excitement that goes through or whatever, you know, like you might be stoked that you landed the trick, but damn, are you bummed that you can't ride that board anymore? And it's done, yeah. you know? And so like, I know dudes who have st- st- stacks of broken skateboards and they saved them. I did this for the longest time, you know? And like, I didn't know what I was going to do with it, but I loved it, you know? It was like a trail of your carnage, you know? And you yeah. could look back and be like, that was all my tricks. And you could even look at a board and say, say like this is where i landed this trick or like whatever like and so that means something like that's an imprint that's history you know like you know when you won a contest with something or like that board means something like i have a board that i i kept that was super messed up that was a it was the board that i skated when the first time i skated in new york city awesome that is 100 percent how i feel like i learned how to skate that concrete will f up a nose and a tail super quick but dude it's like that but then there's also random streets that are just like skate park ground and they have these like curbs that have this Coping on it. Yep. And you just like what? New York City is the best. It's so crazy. Shout out to my homie Mark Nardelli. He's the owner of Five Borough. He or one of the owners of Five Borough, I should say. Um, And I got off the plane in New York City, going to Manhattan. Took an hour, maybe two hours to finally get there. I'm wearing sandals. I'm wearing sandals, a tank top, and some shorts. I show up at this full house. He's like, bro. I don't remember how long you'd been living there, but he's like, I can safely say in all these years that I've lived here, 
nobody has ever walked in my door with fucking flip flops uh, on. And I was yeah, like, yeah, yeah. he's like, what's up, California? <laughs> I'm like, what's up, bro? Like, dude, just walk through your door, <laughs> dude. Yeah. And then like, I ch- we change, and then we go skate down the street. He takes me through the neighborhoods, and then we're skating. I f- feel like what well, was like the financial district or something. Yeah. And he just runs the red light and I look over and there's a bus coming and like I cross and I was like, that's when I remember learning how to like really just push through like yeah. street traffic. And after I came back from there, Oh, it's I the best feeling though. I knew how to though. skate, bro. Like, yeah. you know how to skate once you skate New York City streets. Oh, dude, for sure. Like, I'm lucky, like, growing up in Boston or whatever, like, we'd skate Boston all the time. So, like, Copley Fountain, the plaza, the financial district over there, the mar- like, the window ledges in PJ's uh, wonderful, horrible, terrible life or Dude, whatever. Like, you know those ledges? Oh, the, yeah, with man. The line with, this like, is... the flat ground line that yes, he does? Yes, Dude, those, like, yeah. Like, that's the priceless time in skating right there. Oh, like, dude, Coliseum's, dude, like, video? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. So One good. of the best shop videos ever made if not the best yes. shop video Ryan ever Gallant, made. Jeremy Rogers, oh, yeah. Southie, yeah. Alexis Sobaloni. That's awesome. And dude, yeah, yeah, oh, yeah. dude, are you kidding me? Yeah, PJ memorized. Wonderful Horrible Life is yeah. my favorite video part of all time. Dude, that video part that he laid down right there is revolutionary, especially to like the way we see like the cadence of like trick sequences of how they go down these days. Like there would not be like with with the, he brought it with that video part. Like that's the creativity of like the guns but in the newest style at that point you know dude like, he did one like switch 180 50 backside flip on the yeah. in, like out in the middle of a ledge yeah he did uh fucking like he was the first person i ever saw do like a front side tail side front side 270 like flip oh out. yeah 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 remember yeah, yeah. he yeah. was like flipping that was out, the win- dude. that's all the window ledges yeah dude and then there's like uh he like He's been here, dude. I, PJ's got one of my cutting boards. Like, I'm really? a big, yeah, I'm a big fan. Like, dude, he, and I'm stoked. Like, I've I've worked with wow. him. On, he, like, he's red, dude. Uh, for his shoe release with New Balance, New Balance got in contact with me, and I made um, a whole bunch of these. Uh, what the heck are they? Uh, incense holders. And wow. yeah, and it was rad, dude, like for when his shoe release came out, but they ended up getting used for something else. But like, that's what put me and PJ in contact it, again or whatever. And so the funny thing is, is like we skated, like I never skated with him or, but I skated well, he was skating at like the window ledges or at Copley Fountain and stuff like that. And I would just sit there and watch him skate, dude. He's so good. Oh, like, so you were there during the heyday? Yeah. Like, oh yeah. Yeah. Oh my like, God. I, at the same time he moved out here, I moved out here. Like. It was just crazy coincidence. Like, but did you see him back in Boston though too? Yeah, because he's from there. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, that's where I. So that's where you originally met him. Yeah, like during the whole time that he was recording, like uh, that wonderful horrible life. Yeah, dude, that's where I lived. I lived in East Boston. Like, wow, Eli Reed. who uh joey pepper like dude like all the regulars around town like uh um, damn joey pepper yeah 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 wow uh, dude like you're all the dudes like jeremy rogers and all those fools like dude, dude, dude boston had so many red people like of course like the the, the core dudes like vanika kobian and like uh that would go over in between there and friggin like uh new york city and stuff like that Ricky Oyol- yeah Ricky Oyola no that's that's no? philly that's, oh fuck but dude Sorry. he Sorry. is <laughs> a god to me that guy is he really i was gonna ask you because because you're East Coast. He's, yeah, dude. Ricky Oriola. Is, <laughs> he is Like traffic cool. and stuff? Oh, dude. Oh, dude, yeah. Like Jack's the back. Well, and any like... of those East Coast uh, videos or whatever, like I was always a big fan, especially like the EST videos, the New York mixtape, Eastern oh, Exposure dude. videos. Yeah, like, yeah, dude, yeah. like they mixtapes. brought it. So my Sarah Bassett. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Okay. So my hometown... Uh, Marlboro, Massachusetts. This is where homie Mike Graham came from. Okay. Uh, he doesn't remember me or whatever, but this was one of my my main influences skating up or growing up skating or whatever. And like the dude just killed it. He was so smooth or whatever. And like so like I dude like he was one of the dudes that made it so like i would go into boston all the time and go skate and try to like skate the same dude that guy was so good i've yeah he's Sick. probably still to this day one of the best tray flips and like th- that i was ever able to see like back in the day in like, person yeah. yeah oh dude so influential but nonetheless like freaking boston skateboarding east coast skating like i love east coast skating like going back to like the new york style like mm-hmm. dude it's raw and it's ruthless like you got to skate through the winter time you'll shovel off spots like it's awesome dude like east coast like especially like east coast hip-hop oh, dude. dude don't even get me started on hip-hop bro like if you, do you really do you fuck with hip-hop i like hip-hop like, i like it because you're east coast like yeah heavy heavy east like dude so, hip-hop came out the south bronx so yep. it's like you can go like if we want to talk hip-hop we can talk about like grandmaster flash oh yeah Bombada, all that stuff but i love then, it all dude and, like the message and all that stuff oh, came yeah. out of the east coast but then 
for me growing up, it's like, you know, Biggie. I absolutely love yeah. Biggie. Biggie is, I, the Raiders are like one of my all time favorite things. And Biggie is also one of my all time favorite things. I have a board that Merrick, my homie Merrick, he rides for them and he sent me the board that has Biggie and like wearing Raiders gear. That's awesome. That's yeah. on the bottom of a skateboard. Are like, you fucking kidding me? Yes, that's going on my wall. Yeah. But, um, and then like, that's probably dude, rare. I went to Penn State. <laughs> oh, nice. For yeah. a very small time. But I remember like, going over there and like hearing like that was when like fat joe and like lean back and all that oh, shit yeah. it was like so i can go like there we can go like such a good time in big hip-hop, l dude. fucking dude the dip set like well, dude like underground boston like hip-hop scene was awesome at the same time like they had um the uh, ed og creators uh like the whole bunch of like oh, who comes out of boston that i listen to oh well a whole bunch of Oh, well, I mean, Guru. Joyner Lucas, I think, is from Boston. Uh, Jedi Mind Tricks. Jedi Mind Tricks is from Boston? I think so. I'm pretty I did not sure. Know. I know who they are, but yeah. I did not know that they're I'm from pretty them. sure. Um, who else? There's a whole acrobatic, Mr. Liff. Like, I know Mr. Liff. Yeah, dude, I know this Mr. This is the Liff. whole time period of, of like when I was listening to like definitely like the deepest hip hop that I was into. And like, well, I Wu Tang. Oh, dude, dude, all over the place. Like, all over the place. Okay, who's your? Who do you think? Who would you credit to be one of the more successful members of Wu Tang? I'll ask you. Other a question. than RZA, like I mean, obviously well, RZA for RZA's sure. RZA's successful, but who still has street cred to you? RZA for sure, first and foremost. RZA because he's the creator. Like I, I read the books like the Tao of the Wu, and like I read the like the origin stories of That's all awesome. Wu Tang guys. Yeah. Um. I mean, Method Man still has a, a lot of clout, in my opinion. Method Man is like just a in, you know, classic. Um, okay, my answer: Ghostface. He's the one that made may, it out. Maybe I, I was going to say untouched. Raekwon, though. because Ray oh, nah. Ghostface, I well, seen Ghostface and Raekwon perform together like two Raekwon's years ago. Raekwon's second album, though. Dude, what the one with uh, Marvin on it? The, like, what is that? fucking song called uh i mean cuban links dude his first one was sick probably one of the best albums of all time oh yes H- yeah, yeah, hip-hop yeah. albums of all time but like everybody's second album was ugh. oh uh, well no yeah no yeah, i'd yeah. say like except for ghostface dude all of ghostface's albums are awesome this is true yeah. supreme clientele i think he's the only one that holds like real street clout at any given point out of any of those dudes at this point you know what i'm saying like the rizza he got fancy He's a good dude. Don't but get see, me wrong. And I love his beats. And I love to Bobby Digital sick. And it's a different thing. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. And I understand it and I respect it for what it is. Yeah. But like even more so. And like even like the stuff that he does for movie and film scores is amazing. Yeah. I love what he does. And I think the strategy that he does to it and everything. But I think the only dude who still has like real street cloud out of all of those dudes is Ghostface. Ghostface. Dude, Ghostface is still like threatening people. Yes. <laughs> yes. <laughs> when actually Bronson like. I tried to beef oh, with yeah. him like Ghostface Killer was just like you stupid like fat motherfucker like it's like yo it's <laughs> you like you're this you can't just piss him. off Ghostface like don't think because he has gray in his beard that he's some punk well like, you sound like him <laughs> that's, a lot of people say that he sounds oh, like oh he does and I, I he sounds like some of the most raw versions of him but that's like but the same I also thing that's like going that, on though. well yeah me too but that's what's going on in like rock and roll and punk rock music is like everybody's mad derivative and sounding like the heyday of whenever their genre was in its heyday so you got dudes that sound like Nas when Nas was pulling off Illmatic and you got dudes yeah. that sound like whatever and so like this is what is the internet bringing to the table these days it's so and this hard is to why be significantly well, different this is why everybody can be cool for whatever they're doing because within any given genre is a cool kid you know what I'm saying so walk the talk go buy it go go on ebay and buy all the goods similar but you're also different within that similar group yeah you know so it depends if you're just able to bring your own aspect to things or whatever and i be original man yeah like be you yes like there's only one you anyways like so with anything i mean if anything in mumble rap i guess like is it has its own unique approach and i i do the beats are awesome but like half the music i can't even but the, say, i've had this conversation know? multiple yeah. times and that's the thing that i always say is it's the same a different branch of the same tree yeah, yeah. it's like it has its origins with the beats and all these things okay yes but if you people who don't really know hip-hop are mm-hmm. like i fucking hate that shit it's like bro but really like there's a time and a place don't tell me you're gonna be up in the club getting drunk and you're gonna be like oh this migo song or future song came on and it fucking <laughs> sucks but like you're hyped up. Your girl's hyped up. She's dancing on you. Well, you're going to be mad at that. Calm down. What? But then you're like, but then you're like, you're not going to put Nas like hate me now bump in there. But like, yo, if I'm in the gym or I'm at home, 
you can hate me now. Like, uh, like Escobar, N A S. You know that those are the letters that spell, or like you know these things. There's a time and a place. Oh yeah, to each thing. Don't get me wrong. Like if I'm at the skate park, there's a certain songs that'll come on that are awesome. But dude, I'm definitely like, I don't know. I'm jaded. Dude, I'm, I don't 90s know. rap has especially 90s East Coast rap. Yeah, it's got me jaded. But see, that's why I. But see, that's what I mean. Like the way you asked me earlier, we can relate this back to yeah. like coffee and skating. Is like, I don't consider myself like a certain thing of skating. I've just I've been skating for so so long that I'm just a skateboarder Heck with hip hop. Yeah. I love hip hop in every sense of the word because Legit. of like I identify like I don't like to say identify because that sounds so stupid, but like I how I am as a person and how I've lived my life, hip hop has influenced every aspect of that. Awesome. So when I hear like a super lyrical hip hop rapper or like an old school hip hop rapper, nineties, seventies, I can't really do too much seventies hip hop, maybe not even too much eighties. It's like late eighties, all nineties. 2000s for sure like nelly fucking kanye when kanye was kanye <laughs> and like you know like murphy lee like the shake your tail feathers type shit and then yep. you got like the fat joes and the dip sets and like yes yes and yep. then you get into like the new mumble rap and like some of it's not fun Dude, the beats are so good but the beats are so amazing they're so good and there's no talent either like you go up there like i saw this uh at outside lands i saw this guy named smoke perp mm -hmm. This fool was his own <laughs> hype man. Like, hey, but I knew that it was going to be turn up music and I wanted to turn up. I was yep. at a festival and I was like having fun. A good time. I was good having time. a very and good if time. they're you bringing know? it, that's what's up. You the know? dude came out. He's rapping. He's clearly just playing like a song. Like he presses play and he t grabs a mic and he's basically karaoke in his song. Yeah. And but the hype was so I was just ah, ah, just like getting all hype. Heck yeah. And again, time and a place. Yeah. Later that day, Nas was on. And then, you know, I'm over Dude, when you talk about, like, you get so excited, you cried. That happens to me all the time. Heck, yeah. Like, I've... That's a... That's... Dude, that's where you know you're in, like, a real place. I've been... Yeah, dude, I've been in the middle... The happy tears. Yeah. It's like you're you're so overwhelmed well, with the emotion that you connect. Like, like, just like, ah. It goes beyond whatever thoughts you can have because it's a direct connection between whatever you're experiencing and what you're experiencing internal. It's like, it's like you're just a conduit for like everything that you're going through. So you like, bro, you know, well, to tie it even back to hip hop, like you said, Nas, Nas is my number one all time favorite rapper of all, of all time, all time. All time. I, I think dude, I'll say Illmatic's probably number one album. Dude, he played the first time I ever saw Nas. I went to, the only reason I went to Coachella was cause Nas was a headliner. Legit. And so, but I didn't know that obviously. So when he like, you don't know the people when they're going to come out or they release it or you already had your, t I don't know. I don't remember how it happens, but I knew he was going to be a headliner. I was like, I have to see him. He played Illmatic from start to finish the whole uh, thing. And then even with like the intro track with the subway, uh, dude, he did everything. And then he fucking brought Jay-Z that, out. That, that, that track gets me high. Dude, he brought Jay-Z out and they fucking did uh, either dead presidents and or black Republicans. <sighs> they fucking, he brought out, uh, P. Diddy, they did Hate Me Now, and then he brought out, like, a couple other people. I don't remember now, but, dude, he even did, like, um, Made You Look. Yeah. And, and like, it's just like, brave heart. Like, going hella hard, and, like, he, I cried at Life's a Bitch because that's, like, my favorite song. Like, yeah. I woke up early on my born day. I'm 20. It's a blessing. The end of the, the, you know, adolescence of essence. Oh my God. It was just Life's like, a bitch and then you die. yeah. And that's it was like tears, bro. And then when Made You Look came on. Yeah. At the end of it, I was just like, I was definitely inebriated, but like, yeah. I was like tears and my, my, my wife who was my girlfriend at the time. She's like, Are you okay? I was like, I'm just like, this is everything that I've always wanted. Dude. I've wanted to see him. And like, I was like rapping every fucking word. Well, an experience like, is an experience. And when you bro. feel it, you feel it. And like I'm saying, like I, it's weird to experience things like that. And this is the weirdest thing, dude, because I've connected with weird music and it's hit me like that. And even music, like I didn't really like uh, classic rock until I started like smoking pot until I, I didn't start smoking pot until I was like in my late twenties. Like when I was growing up, I was like severely straight edge, but like, when I connected with it, I connected with it hard. Yeah. And dude, I know this sounds stupid, stereotypical, and I know everyone's <laughs> gonna make fun of me for saying any bit about this. But dude, one day I'm driving into the backcountry roads of Marlboro, Massachusetts, or whatever. I'm on my way to the skate park in Shrewsbury, and uh, legit, like, like 
uh, Freebird comes on. Freebird. Yes. Right? Yes. So it's that solo, you know, and the solo is just climbing and it's just climbing. And it's just, you know, you can feel the tension climbing and it's like you can just feel like the musicians getting dirty into it. You can hear like the guitar going and the freaking cymbals are getting crashed and the drums getting crashed. You know the vibe. The beaters keep going and like, <laughs> dude, it just keeps climbing. And like the, you hear this like... <laughs> And it keeps going and keeps going and keeps going. It gets higher and higher and higher in pitch. And I'm like, okay, it's going to crack now, right? It, it didn't crack and it kept going. And like all of a sudden, like I felt this weird shit where I was like, just like, I didn't even remember I was driving. I'm staring at the freaking car radio as I'm driving and I'm like, like what the hell? And then it cracks and my eyes just pissed tears, dude. And, and like, like, this is beautiful. I felt this weird, overwhelming, warm hearted, loving experience to frigging free bird. <laughs> and I'm like, oh, I feel so stupid. I'm so happy I'm by myself. But like I connected and like it made me feel some shit right there where I just wanted yeah. to translate that feeling into whatever the hell I can do. You know, whether it's this, that and the other thing, like I wanted to make people feel the way I felt right there. And whether I don't know if people have connectivity at the things I do or the things I make or whatever, but I just really want to give it my best shot. You know, you got the passion, man. Well, I mean, got to have something. And like, I don't know what other people have, but I shit, dude, like for the longest time, I was just a punk, dude. And I took a lot of stuff for granted. And like to feel that that's real, you know, and like that connected with me super hard. And like, I never felt really anything like that. And like I said, I never had direction. Like it was all BS and like crap or fluff and smoke or like I want to do this because it makes money or whatever like and like it just it wasn't connected and then like that's a that's a point of connection with me or like making that portafilter filter handle like that's a point of connection with me like yeah these emotional states I never had before in my life because I wasn't open to them you know and so like to be able to create these things or to make these things or to like help these things be what they need to be or whatever like I feel like my that's my destiny or like like that's my that's what role. you're meant to do yeah yeah and then like to all of a sudden feel like such a burr and everything else and then all of a sudden be seated with like where you need to be and where you need to go it's like yeah that's what i'm gonna do or i'm gonna try my hardest you know and so like you know this rad little where wood shop or whatever with all these crazy tools started in my garage with like the tools that i found at garage sales or like my family was nice enough to give gift to me you know like and so, That's like, so I'm stoked now. I got sponsored by Grizzly Tools, and so they you outrated. got a sponsor like yeah. you're like a sponsored Dude, skater, but I, like I, a sponsor woodworker. Yeah, That's I didn't sick. know this happened. That's and so, sick. like, I I bought this used lathe in order to make the things I made, and like, I just loved it so much. And the thing was like literally like a '90s like high school lathe. The G zero fourteen ninety five. I remember like the <laughs> back of my hand. Anyways, like I loved it so much, and like I would just talk about it constantly on Instagram. And I got in communication with them, and they were like, "Hey, you know, like, is it cool if we send you some other tools?" I'm like, "Yes." And Please. then yeah, <laughs> so like I would talk about it, and then all of a sudden my lathe broke down, and they're like, "Well, we'll just send you another one." And I'm like, "What?" Like, dude, mind blown. <laughs> like, and like it was just the weirdest thing I never felt anything like that like I always wanted to get sponsored as a skater I was never that good like I, w I skated for a shop in Boston mm -hmm. Blades Skateboard Shop which is not there and it's completely embarrassing that it's called Blades but Whatever. nonetheless yeah they hooked it up and it was just flow like I wasn't even like contractual or nothing like I yeah. got some boards you know and uh, like it was just rad the way it worked out but like this was a legit like you know, like they're, they helped me out with tools, you know, and then like uh, Starbond adhesives, they helped me out with adhesives. And so sometimes I get packages from different companies and stuff like that. And I'm great to work with them and stuff like that, too. Damn, you know, sick, dude. So like I never thought that that capacity could happen in anything other than skating. So like I'm dude, I'm so grateful. And that now you have your own coffee gear, too. So yeah. you're sponsored by your tools for your woodworking. You have coffee gear that you make yep. and people send them to you. Yeah. Dude, now you just need like a straight like skateboard company. Ah, like, dude, dude, that would be the dream. Dude, I mean, go. just to to smash it all together. Like, so this is where I'm going. You know, I've done a lot of production work, and I make a lot of coffee tools and pieces, and I make very few like artistic creative pieces or like whatever. But I have made like I've made an 11 foot conference table that was actually a grand dining room table, all made out of broken skateboards and a little bit of like white oak. What? 11 feet. Wow. 11 feet long, three inches thick, shaped like a surfboard, 
and they wanted it to look like it was floating and had this crazy beveled edge that went Dude, around the whole perimeter. Can you send me a perimeter. photo of that? Please? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. Absolutely. Thank you. And the thing, it was amazing. Like, I've never seen a table like it even still to this day because all the other skate tables that are made are closed off on the end. They don't have the lines going off the perimeter because they're made out of, like, veneers and stuff, like the very thin layers. This is wrapped around a core, so it's kind of like, but it's thick layers. So, and it translates so you can see the lines wrap around the corners of the piece rather than being closed off by other pieces of wood or something like that. So, like, it was the only one I ever seen like that up until that point. And, yeah, like, the thing was, like, it took, like, f just under 500 skateboard decks to make. It was, like, 500 pounds for just the top. Damn. And, like, the thing was a beast. It took up, like, the whole area from, like, the door to the table saw right there. Wow. Yeah. That's incredible. Wow, really? Yeah. That whole thing? Like 11 feet, yeah. Wow. Yeah, it's crazy to see that. So, Dude. like, I was just hyped, but, like, it was off of somebody seeing one of my coffee tools and them being like... Uh, Are you serious? Yeah, yeah. So, this dude... Wow. This dude was in China. He contacted me. He's like, I want that coffee tool you just posted, but my wife is in Long Beach. Can you meet up with her and give it to her? And, you know, I'll send you the money. I'm like, okay, cool. So, I met up with her, and she was like, this is sick. She's like, I work for designers. Can I show this to people? And I was like, yeah, yeah, absolutely. Please. Yeah. <laughs> and so legitimately in the next couple of months, we planned out this awesome table that went to this multifamily, like multi-million living experience in like Costa Mesa where all the walls push back to like recess. So it looks like, you know, it's indoors, outdoors type of thing or whatever. And the whole place is like these drab colors of like gray and brown hardwoods and this or whatever and then in the middle of everything is this crazy huge table that's just sets it off with all of this crazy color it's like a huge explosion throughout the whole thing it's awesome and you can see that it's here in long beach you said no uh you know i don't know where it is currently oh, uh wow. i believe it's either in costa mesa or santa Ana, because that's where i knew the customer who, who had it was but i don't is it like in a house it's like it's in a house it's oh it's a house house yeah oh so damn I, I have no idea that must be like that'd be so sick to see i would you know, dude i had like two weeks of postpartum when it left it took me really? probably like it took because i was working on it off and on like i didn't give it like straight attention because i had to do normal production too but it took like like the equivalent of like three months straight work to do or whatever and that's just the top you know i didn't make the base somebody else made the base but yeah damn it was sick somebody went in on that table like Dude. yo they wanted it they meant they wanted it yeah that's a, yeah yeah <laughs> yeah it was it was it was no a buck option. or two for sure dude it was, that's crazy yeah i'm hyped to have been able to do that because that like that was like a benchmark thing for me like that was one of the things i was like imagine if i was able to like do this for full-time work and imagine if i was able to work with coffee companies to make what they already make but with skateboards and imagine if i was able to make a huge freaking table and like dude these are things that i've been able to accomplish and it's i'm kind of crazy grateful. how they all came together for you like that it's weird we're literally we're all three uh, you can't really do one without the other it sounds like when you talk about it it's like yeah you skate your skateboards go into your coffee gear your coffee gear goes like you're doing this because of your woodworking ability yeah. but skateboards are made of wood it's like well what how did you end up doing, like, well gratefully like i just did it because it was barking at my damn soul you know dude, what i'm saying so there's other crazy. dudes who do it nowadays and there's woodworkers that specifically use it that don't skate and there's yeah. you know whatever but to each their own dude i'm i'm so hyped to ha ever have had the experience and to on a daily basis get to come here and do this like i do in all honesty like i never really i was a spoiled ass kid and like it took a good amount of time in order for me to get the mindset of like being grateful for things and stuff like that and of appreciation it definitely like came from like the the hardships and the the lows of life that they'll throw at you with the, whatever that you're Bad going decisions through. or whatever yeah, yeah you know i've made a few and like i'm willing to burn and learn and i'm willing to walk through it and i'm willing to try to be uh like my not my, just like just try to go put the best foot forward on a daily basis and like you know i've tried to do better i'm like i'm no saint or anything like that but like i'll tell you what like as far like as anything i'm trying to be better than who i was yesterday whether it's skating or the woodworking or whatever or as a business person at this point or whatever you know like just trying to do the best i can in any situation and look at what i've been through in order to use it to not 
guide my decision well to, to guide it but like not like hinder it you know what i'm yeah. saying like yeah. to learn from it and to move forward like it'd be stupid to have all this rad experience and to not learn from it so yeah yeah, yeah whatever i can do like i'm trying to like pull forward and, and and to do the best i can every day you know dude that's what's up bro shoot dude. you know dude we're at an hour 23 bro yeah i think that right there that's a good that's a good stopping part i mean the only thing i had left i wanted to ask you about is um did we cover when did you why did you start skateboarding was there like an older brother was there oh, like dude, that's an awesome question thank you for asking yeah so right around okay so i got my first skateboard when i saw back to the future and that was nice. just like valterra like you know friggin department store skateboard you know what i'm saying and it was mm -hmm. a buster i wish i still had that thing that'd still be awesome but uh dude gleaming the cube came out years later and my cousin uh, this is Marlboro, Massachusetts, granted. Uh, my cousin got uh, a Tommy Guerrero, the the sword. Sick. And so he clued me into all of this, that there was this whole thing going on with skating and all this other stuff. And I'm like, damn, dude. And like, so I learned about Tony Hawk. So I got a Hawk Street. Dude, Hawk Street, Tracker 6-Track Ultralights, freaking white crossbones. Like, I, yeah, German bearings. Like, Sick. I will never forget that board because every board I've had sense is because of that board you know like it's crazy Epic. but dude like yeah yeah, yeah. I, my cousin i seen him do like not even an acid drop he pulled this move where he just like kind of flicked the board down and flicked it under his feet and i was like oh what you don't just ride it <laughs> <laughs> you can like do stuff with it yeah. and then like how so, old were you uh dude 10 10 okay yeah. that's right you did tell me you started skating when you were 10 yeah but that's that's the moment there. Yeah, that was the moment. You yeah, saw your cousin or do I, it. I saw somebody do the move where they had the board upside down on their feet and they jumped up and did like half a flip and jumped on it to the wheels. You know what I'm saying? And I was like, Whoa. oh, like the handstand thing. Like, well, just with their feet. You know, if it's like if it's upside down over your oh, toes, and then flip it over. Yeah. Oh, damn! And I was dude, just you're like, it's easy. You were easy to get picked up. I was on like, it. what? <laughs> and then like I saw somebody ollie and I'm like there's secret tricks like it's Dude. like mortal Kombat, you know like up up square does some other shit like, <laughs> so like i was like what you know and so like from that it was on and so this was a crazy point in my life because before that like i don't know like this was the first thing that like i heard that there were other dudes that skated and so i sought them out to go find them within my town you know so i found these other dudes behind city hall in marlboro massachusetts and they were skating and so i got to be friends with them even though i was like the grom at the time and like they all dude they they hazed the shit out of me like i had my board snapped <laughs> by them i got my ass kicked by them but they were the dudes you know and so like i mean i'm friends with a lot of them still to this day or whatever and i'm so grateful for every one of those experiences you know and like yeah hell yeah how about you uh, when I started skating or what was your first board and when did you start skating? Oh, my first board. Oh, wow. Um, well, my first board board was my brother's hand me down board. It was like a old school fish, but then it would have been like this. It was like a Nash. Nice. From like fucking either Toys R Us or like sports yeah. authority or something, whatever. But mine came from Rich's department store. Yeah. <laughs> dude, that was like, if that's like the first, first board, but then dude, my first board, like an actual board. My brother got it for me on Christmas and it was a, it was a blind reaper board. It Ooh. was like a seven five and, uh, it had like the blind, like grip strip mm -hmm. on the top and they gripped it around it. Oh and yeah. Yeah. It was blue. It had like blood splatter and it was the little reaper. It was like a little cute reaper. Yeah. 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 And he had like, he had like a sickle behind him with blood. And so the blood was splattered all over Dude, it. But it was like pretty a black, sure I know the board you're talking yeah, about. Yeah. Blue black drop, like a blue uh, backdrop. And then, um, yeah, all those colors, but then blue ventures, and then he uh, red and blue like tie dye uh, Spitfires with yes. red bearings. Yes, bro. Yes, it was the I lost my fucking mind. I was like, oh, my yes, God. yes. But, um, but yeah, that was. I think like why I started skateboarding. I honestly, I always kind of had a board in my life, but it was like knee boarding, and then I ran oh, yeah. over my finger. I was over that. I was like, nope, not gonna do that for a while. I rollerbladed. Yeah. And then I saw it. Oh, that's what it was. I saw Tony Hawk do the 900 in San Francisco. Dude, yeah. legit. That was when I was like, fuck rollerblading. That's awesome. I'm straight skateboarding now. Yeah. Yeah. That was what got it. Shoot. Just the X Games being in San Francisco. Yeah. Like that was, I was like, what? Shoot. I was lucky enough to see the X Games live in Rhode Island back when they were in the Rhode Island. The first one. So you remember when Tony Hawk did like the, like the 720 into the water? 
that was the first the first X Games I went to, and I think it was the last one in Rhode Island. And oh, I think okay. I think they had like two or three in Rhode Island or whatever. Okay. But yeah, yeah, yeah. Like, dude, that's crazy. Yes, dude. Do you know Jamie Thomas? Like, was in the X Games. He's like back fifty, some crazy ass handrail. I remember seeing like oh yeah, from, like the those dude, early X Games. Eric Costin used to kill it in the X Games. Like, dude, do you remember the X Games when they did it at Love Park in the yes, park? Yes. And Josh Kalis got to cover a trans world skateboarding. He knew the he back blasted, nose, the yeah. back nose bone on the top of that barrier. Oh yeah. That was so sick, dude. That was that. Josh that was Kalis. that was an awesome time in skateboarding, right there. Yeah. That was like, like yeah, late nineties, like ninety six, ninety seven, ninety eight, or something like that. That was like two thousand. Was it, dude? Maybe like ninety nine, two thousand. Maybe yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, like around there. Yeah, because that like Kerry Getz had like. They were skating. Oh, he yeah, did the yeah, front yeah. side flip melon yep. like, over the trash can. Well, that was the because they were gonna close off Love Park after that. They tore it down right after that, didn't they? I think so. Yeah. 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 My time my line might be messed up, but like that whole East Coast dude, the East Coast skaters like Stevie, the DC video, dude, the toy Get machine dudes, here. like uh, who is it there? Well, I mean. Um, What's it? What the hell is his name? Uh, Donnie Barley, dude. Like, yeah, like you already mentioned, Ricky Iola. Like, oh my god, Donnie dude. Barley, Element Donnie Barley. Yes. Was, like, dude, Donnie Barley was on Toy Machine too. Yeah, that's what I was just saying. Oh, yeah, okay, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Sorry, I knew yeah. that. I knew that. Oh man, dude, heavy metal. Uh, yeah, dude. Uh, Mike Maldonado, like all of that. Dude, yeah. C two or C K Y two K. Oh come on, like, yeah, all yeah. All those dudes, like, oh my god. Yeah. Oh I, man. I loved all those dudes. Like Day One Song, Round One and Round Two. Round Two uh, was way better though. Uh, I, I have round two here. I watch it all the time. Do like, you really? Yes, yes, I do. <laughs> yeah. Dude, round two is such a good video, especially Dude. the bonus comments with uh, Mullen talking about how he had to like take college classes in order to figure out how to do like the gnarly hard flip out of like the crooked grind or something like that. Did he really? Yeah, yeah, yeah. If, I'll, I'll let you borrow the video if you want. It's <laughs> awesome. He had to take college classes to figure it out. Dude, like, that's so that, crazy. Just the explanation of that and like the whole, all the music that was going down in that video is so good too. Like, Dude, all of Daywan's tricks too, like train uh, those blunts like down like sides of buildings practically yes yes dude what are you doing bro yeah the, the, like the stacks of the picnic tables that's like, what i'm the, saying dude the freaking the cargo trucks like everything that he's done like i've been lucky dude, the to almost skate with videos him. like yeah yeah dude. like dude like he he goes to village skate park a bunch out here or whatever and it's awesome when i'm fortunate enough to get to see him or like i see him in long beach every once in dude, a while what's it like to see him skate in person uh, <laughs> you, just, you just stop you just stop yeah, you, know? you can't even skate dude, the, the guy's got perfect balance he's like built for skateboarding like if you had to take a frame and replicate it for like a skater like you'd give it like day one's shape like <laughs> he's like perfect built for skateboarding like oh my God. it's like he's got like gyroscopes or something like the guy is just like especially the footage that he's still putting out with all the variations and all like the good thing the crazy like just the crazy dude the, the the tray flips with like three wheels and then popping a wheel back on and stuff like that like he's ridiculous like dude. anyways like yeah i love skateboarding today and it's evolved in such a good place it makes me so happy dude that the one trick that i could still do and i i do it because of him is the rock kick flip ah yeah. that's sick dude, yeah, that's that a sick move it's one of the, it's like, what's I, it's what I can do. I just always have that one. But it was like, it's because of him that it got super inspired. Like my, a lot of my skating got really inspired at him, especially with after cheese and crackers. Shoot. That's like such Haslam a good video. Too. Yeah. Dude. The creativity that came out in that video is so good. Like, I mean, completely. Dude, I don't. And dude, I, I won't even like, I won't even fake the funk. I learned a lot of my tricks because of that. I did like fakey kick flip, fakey double flip, fakey, tr or, uh, rock kick flip, rock double flip rock flip, oh. tray flip it was just like whatever rock version you could do what and like rock heel that's flip. sick dude, it that's was, sick it, but it was fucking day one training it's master sick. yeah 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 oh dude so i've got to where did else i see i saw him skate i think um where the heck was it um the maddox skate facility or whatever way back when i worked for back in the day yeah oh did you work at the dvs warehouse no i i worked uh the one of the companies i worked for uh built trade show booths for like maddox and like uh dwindlers Dwind yeah, yeah, yeah it was a podium yeah podium yeah and so we, we we the homies got me into the skate facility every once in a while to skate it and that dude was slaying things he was doing like tray flip from one transition to like wall ride in the next transition of like no. dude he was doing ridiculous oh things like my mind was like and i couldn't even skate because i was just sitting there watching him skate the whole time and i'm just like oh that's my dude God. that's better than skating i'm yes. not even gonna lie yes I've, 
I just, yeah, I'd be like, dude, what, what'd you do today? I Mind watched melt. another man skate, and it was probably the best day of my life. <laughs> dude, it's so many times that, like, you got to be grateful to be able to watch some of the magic that goes down. And, like, dude, Cherry Park over here in Long Beach. Oh, dude, yeah. Oh, my God. Oh, yeah, bro. No, like, I, uh... I, I go to skate, but I end up watching so much. And I'm just like, I'll just sit there and skate. Or, like, you know, when Channel Street Skate Park was open uh, under the yeah. bridge over here in Pedro. Mm-hmm. Oh, my God. Dude, like, Chris Russell. Yeah. Dude, when he was a baby, like, would always be skating there. And then, like, Ronnie Sandoval. Yep. Fucking all the... Day one. Yep. Dude, all those fools. Yep. Dude, like, that, that place brought out so... And, like, just, just people, I had no idea who they were. Like, I saw, like, just people just shredding in that place. I'd just go there, and I would want to skate, but I would just watch. And, like, it was just amazing to watch these people. It was dude, so Robbie tight. Russo, like... Yeah, it dude, was, like, compact in yes. there. Yes. Like, like, especially because it's gone through a transformation. It started out just, like, so herky jerky and it was so DIY. It was like just any like those like Washington roughest. Street in San Diego. Yeah, just yeah. the roughest stuff. And then it got cleaned up and like did better. And then it got freaking shut down because of insurance and stuff and like how much money it cost because it was stupid expensive. And so hopefully now I think last thing I heard is it's going to be opening again. So oh, wow, yeah. I did not know that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like the uh, the city's working with the dudes or whatever. They're trying to move forward with uh, you know removing all the bar on the inside and getting the hobos out of there from sleeping in there and stuff. Yes, yeah, yeah, yeah. It. So yeah, because that place is awesome. Damn. Yeah. Well, dude, <clears throat> did you have any? I mean, like I know you saying. Um, remind me the name again. The oh, fellow products. Fellow. Yeah, that's Chemex. the stag handle. The 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 Chemex collar you can get. Uh, the Dietrich trier sampler handle you can get. Do like, you have any n- new products that are coming out that with any other companies that you could talk about or anything that's coming up? Uh, shoot off the top of my head uh i have uh, for coffee products um you know there's i'm I'm always gonna try to be like progressive with making new things and stuff like that and so there's gonna be the different nuances of here and there but i'm gonna be doing uh, i'm gonna try to focus on a, a couple more furniture pieces and stuff this year cool rather than so much production work but i'm still gonna be making you know the production of the tool handles that i love to make and stuff you know Rad. so whatever whatever i can do but yeah i mean uh, any where I fits in, I get in for sure. You know. Yep, yep. Yeah. Yeah. All right. Well, then, um, Justin, I want to say thank you again for coming on the show. It was, uh, dude, it's a pleasure. So easy to talk to I you. I could about. still, I could keep dude, going. I oh mean. no, we could definitely keep going, <laughs> dude. We'll so have, we'll, the we'll San Diego you, coffee yes. crawl is gonna come up, dude. We're gonna make this happen. We'll do a we podcast go, while you're down south. Hell yeah. All right. Hell yeah. We gotta go to the ocean side. We gotta go to Steel Mill. Yes. Hell yeah. I want to go to that place so bad. We'll go there. We'll go to Seven Seas. We'll go all oh, over. Hell Take yeah. you to Por Vida. Yeah. My others. My shout out to all those homies. Um, but yeah, and then tell the people where they can find you. Uh, I'm on Instagram as epically a Justin E P I C L Y a Justin just, you know, anyways, it's spelled weird. Um, other than that, like I have an Etsy shop, I think it's crafted by JL, but it's always nothing in it. Uh, feel free to contact me, uh, any way you like, uh, JL crafted at gmail.com or you can DM me on Instagram, but yeah, hit me up and, uh, I'm always down for custom projects as well as like the crazy stuff that I already make. So hit me up. Yes. Yes, and that is how we're going to end it, y'all. Justin, thank you again so oh, much, dude, my brother. Thanks is all over here, clearly. Dude, dude. thank dude. you for rolling through. Like, that's a hike that you had to make to come up here, and I am super appreciative, dude. dude thank you so much. I would do it again, and I will do it again. And this time, we'll, like, we can go skate. We can go do some other shit, too. We'll make, oh, dude, we'll make yeah. it like a day, dude. Yeah, like, dude. We'll fucking get down. Hell yeah. All right. I'm down for it. All right. Thank you again, sir. Oh, dude, the thanks is all over here. <laughs> Hell yeah. Okay. Pleasure. Peace. Peace. Yes. Thank you so much, Justin. That conversation was amazing. Willing to burn and learn. Dealing with the you know the str- highs and lows of life. Man. Whew. That one hit home. That one was that was pretty tough. Thank you again, Justin. I really appreciate you taking time out of your day, showing me around your where your uh, your workshop in Long Beach. Thank you to the sponsors of Caffeine and Green, Thorn Street Brewery, Seven Seas Roasting Company. Thank you to all of you beautiful people who continue to listen to the podcast and support me and just show love if you haven't already hit that subscribe button spread the word caffeine and green is what it is and i will see y'all on the road next week peace